weird and I'm in no mood for your job. Do you hear me? Man, I'm not playing. Get out of here or I'm kicking your ethereal ass. Ethereal? I don't even know what that means. Yeah. Welcome back to Gear Chat. Yeah. Welcome back to Gear Chat University. John G, let's get straight to it. Let's get crack a lacking. Let's get back to it. John G, John G. John G, John G, John G. Come into the light, John G. Come into the light. Whoa. It is I says me, John G. Welcome back to Gear Chat University. I am John G. I know, I know, man. He finished gonna be three more weeks before we see it. Uh huh. Got you. Surprise. No. Okay. Um. First up, let's just chime this down real quick, cause I wanna, I wanna, I wanna talk about. I, don't, I, I believe this was. I don't know if I. I believe I might have made a, I might have, I might have made a, I might have made a, I might have already made this correction, but if I have not, I want to make sure I make this correction. Now, I may have already spoken on it. In fact, I probably did. So to start off, we're going to possibly be a reiteration, if not for the first time, me saying that I was wrong. Surprise. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> Like that's a big surprise. Um, when I said that um, uh, Roland was by themselves with the whole um, analog, I mean with the USB over analog, whatever. And DSW, D space SW, uh, Electron does has audio over USB. John G with their overbridge software. Not all of their stuff is overbridge enabled, but for a lot of their gear, you can do that, sir. Well, he didn't quite say it like that. I might have added a whole lot of sauce on it, but that's basically what well, that's how I took it anyway. Um, so yeah, that, that is, but he stands very correct though. That is correct. I, I I dropped the ball, but in my defense, the reason why I, I forgot about, I mean, you know, Overbridge was was out. I knew about it, but it you know I, because I'm not so active, 
I actually forgot about it. I just, I just forgot about it, that's all. And I forgot that it became live on just about everything, I believe. So, yeah, just the fact that you have audio over USB, anything that does that, in my opinion, is just like a major win to have multi track, multi track too. To have multi track. And then I guess if it can't be multi track, the next best thing would be just to have a stereo out. Um,. So yeah, I don't know why that's not just standard now. Like everything coming out. I mean, it's, to my opinion, it should have been standard now for five years where everything is just kind of coming out like that. But it's still not. So shout out to any piece of gear that has that um, piece of tech. I think it's dope. So yeah, let's get to it. Um, if you know here to the channel, this is John GT. You know who I am. This is John GTV. And this is Gear Chat University, a little segment that I that is the heartbeat of John G T V right now. And it's called Gear Chat University. This is where I run my giblets about everything gear related. Um first I wanna say uh I'm not really into Eurorack just yet. Interested, but I ain't there yet. But um Corey over at Beat People, I mean I, he don't beat people, but they beat people with beats whatever so the, over there that guy looks like me you know what i'm saying i mean not that we're twins or anything but anyways um so yeah man thank you because it it kind of is it's kind of like seeing is believing you know what i mean so to see someone look like me make something you already know so it's like oh oh and then like so it's called performer i think p f m r or p f m e r maybe and it's a eurorack um basically a performance module a eurorack module where it has like four buttons and from what i saw is four different types of effects like a tape stop and some other things and so quite naturally you can do all this with eurorack eurorack and um again i i just don't know much about that rabbit hole yet i mean the pedal game rabbit hole was crazy and i know the euro rack is just the same now technically i guess you can say chanji you're lying well i mean i do technically have those area effects and they are euro rack mountable however when i bought them i definitely wasn't thinking like that um that was uh over that was like a over over thought or whatever like yeah you know you can do that like oh okay um but whatever um so yeah i don't really know much about that field like i i know the rabbit hole is is vast and i know that when i want to get into it i know that what i said was make noise just i just i just believe like i believe like even though i know it's a little pricey um next to diy that would be where I'd want to start once I get into that realm because I just believe what their offerings are are kind of juicy. Um, but now that black box has kind of gotten me, I'm like, I'm 10 10. I'm like, you got my attention now. Like, you got yeah, um, you got my attention. Now. That's all I'm saying. You got my attention. So, yeah, but anyways, somebody that's that's kind of like us, I'm not going to put myself in his position, but I'm saying, like, not like a big company, you know, not that I'm him or like. The, those guys and gal gal got gals I only seen one so far but the circle of the beat people um uh to see somebody that's you know like I said not a big company make something I think it's dope I don't know what the price is I have no idea I would imagine you go over to uh uh beatpeople.com probably and check it out if you are into that Eurorack stuff. Along with that Eurorack, uh, Behringer has a sequencer. Initially, when I saw it, I thought it was a hardware sequencer, but turns out it was a Eurorack. So I figured, hey, this might as well go ahead. This is ties right in since I'm talking Eurorack that I don't usually talk about John G. So Behringer has a 960 that's coming out. It's a Eurorack sequencer. 
I think it's eight steps. Again, I don't know much about the features. I would imagine it has like random play and back and forth and maybe some patchable type sequences that I'm sure all that's there where you can patch in with LFOs and all of that. Um, which I, you know, I know people hate Behringer, but since we're talking about Behringer, next up we have the 2600. Yay! Cut it up some more time. All right, cut it back down, cut it back down. Look, Behringer 2600. I look, I, listen. <laughs> the core one gone anyway. Is is anyway it's gone. Like I, you know, even though like that video they made, oh my god. <clears throat> that that like that that sold it by itself. Jeez. Whew, all the sounds they was making out of that thing. Jeez. Um so yeah, I know there are I know there are a lot of you that have a hard stance that do not like Behringer. I get it. However, it is what it is. I don't really because I don't have a I don't have a uh, I don't have any feelings or connection to any of that original stuff. So all of this quote unquote cloning means absolutely nothing to me. I have no pretext or text to like to go like man this ain't the original like I have none of that so it's just to me it's just a it's an instrument and to get something affordable I just I just know the times when they were not like everything was just dolo like money and it's all it's obtainable now so I don't know how one could hate on that. And I can see how you're figuring, like, I don't know what the the legal terms on the clone and stuff is and all of that. However, once, like, the, the, the MS-1 is supposedly cloned after the, the SH-1, but they added to it. So now it's not really a clone because they added to it. I mean... So if they make something that's okay, I'm gonna make it and model it after, inspired by or whatever. I'm gonna use the concept of, and you make something. It's an instrument, and again, it's affordable. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, to each his own. For five ninety nine, the price has been released. It is, it is stamped and sealed. So five ninety nine here is it's on its way. Um. I don't see it. I don't see Behringer have it up for, for pre-order just yet. I imagine maybe within the next 14 days it will be. Um. Yeah, I mean, I definitely want it, but I, you know what? I am. I ain't gonna lie. I feel like Behringer has this team going on. It's, it's very clear to me that there are different people working on all these gear. Because when I tell you that Odyssey... That Odyssey, whoever did the Odyssey or the Behringer, you know, whoever did that, man, like, it's, it's so good. I want to get Korgs just to see the difference. Like, I want to sit down side by side so I can really see because Behringer's offering is, I'm sitting here going, man, this is dope. Like, it's really, really good. So... Uh, if this thing is, you know, whatever, it's, it's, as long as it sounds good or whatever, I forgot where I was going with my train of thought, but um, if this thing sounds, from, from, what, from what I'm hearing, it does sound amazing. But, you know, anyways, 600 bucks uh, is coming along with the Monopoly, I heard, is, is, is slated for November. I have no dates on the, uh, the pricing there. However, when I heard that thing... Uh, the Monopoly doesn't really get my goose. But I'm, I'm not really all that. Like, eh, you know. I, I hope it's cheaper than this price, to be honest with you. And um, I believe it actually probably will be. I'm getting a gut feeling it's probably going to be three ninety nine, maybe four ninety nine. I don't think it's going to be 6 But I, I just, from what I'm hearing, that sound is like a thin sound. And, eh, like... The 2600 sound, the, the sonics of that definitely, you know, intrigues me more. 
Um, but ho however, um, I, I think it'll be dope to, you know, for anybody that can get it in their hands and, and be able to jam with. Um, so Behringer is just doing their thing. It, it is what it is. Moving right along, though, the base station I was talking about, you know, adding on. Okay, you've seen it by now. If you not, if you have not, um, the the new base station, eh, new ish, the effects, which I'm not even. I guess that's a band, I believe, or a producer. The effects base station, um, um, limited edition. You might as well say. I don't know if it is limited edition. Um, but basically i guess it's uh they they did make some some they did add some things to it however if you own the original you can um do a software update and get those changes which i believe is like a per patch i mean a per step you can change you can you can have it basically act more like a drum machine from what i'm understanding and so each step can you can parameter lock each step so you can have it plan through like, you know, like a drum pattern. Um, however, you know, I just feel like hey, innovation, man. I just feel like, you know, y'all guys kind of missed out. I think I think you missed out because right, right now, if someone owns the original. There's no. there's nothing enticing for me to go and get the new one and not that i don't i think it's dope and thank you for allowing the original people to get the update however what i would have done was it would have I, it would have been dope let's just say this it would have been dope if you would have did what you did allowed the update for the old people but then added something additional on the new one so it does give a reason or entices the person that maybe owns the old one to either say, you know what? I'm either going to go after this new one to add it on to the originals that I have so I can have both of them or I'm going to sell my my original. And because what you did is, you know, you know I feel like is you're not like there's a subculture of, you know, secondhand gear. And I, I, don't, I You did not help that at all <laughs> because if I own the original which I do secondhand, I wouldn't get rid of it. I mean, because this is not anything. It's the same thing. Like, so what am I, I'm not getting anything. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like, if, so if I own the original, that's how I would be thinking. If I were you, like, if that was my position, I'd be like, you know, uh, hey, uh, we got to do something else though, you know, to, to get them to kind of like uh, come back again, maybe, possibly. I'm just saying, just, you know, it would have been nice, would have been nice, but hey, new base station, new-ish, it's new, the Aphex, and I mean, obviously, the easiest thing would have, uh, the easiest thing to do would have been is just to add some analog maybe effects to it that that's physical that cannot be simply updated like it's a physical update to whereas yeah dog even if you do have the original no you want this one because check out what this one does and just add some new little sizzles to it add, you gotta sauce it up baby i mean come on now you missed out on a grand opportunity I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I don't know how how much time was spent in I don't know how much time was spent in this. Maybe this was a quick thought and maybe you y'all yeah, gonna see this and be like, you know what? John, he's right. Jesus Christ. Anyways, John G John G TV. I'm just running my mouth because that's what I do. Uh here we go. John G, John G TV. I hope y'all having a uh, a good uh, awakening. Twenty twenty, all about that vision, baby. All about that vision, baby. That twenty twenty vision, baby. I'm seeing things clearly. I see you. <laughs> twenty twenty. 
I don't know what I would do about that. What I would do about